Hey everybody, Dr. Mindy Bierlein here with Renew Physical Therapy, and I'm so excited to be joined by Lauren Serac today. Hi. Yep, she's a physician assistant with Frankenmuth Medical Association here in Frankenmuth, and we're just really excited to be talking about weight loss, especially what all of us women want to talk about and learn more. And so we'll get started here in about two minutes. And just looking forward to all of you guys joining us. We're just going to wait until a few more um, pop on. So just um, for a little bit more information, on your Zoom screen, you should see a question and answer button. And so if anything comes to mind that um, we haven't addressed or something pops up. If you wanna just click on that, feel free to do so. And hopefully we can get to some great questions at the end yeah, of our sure. presentation here. So we've still got some people coming on. Everybody's enjoying this beautiful day. It's awfully humid, huh? It's humid. It's been oh. raining. It's supposed to rain again. Really? Oh, my yard is a swamp. Mm -hmm. But the sun looks like it's trying to come in. Yes, so. beautiful blue skies there. We've got a few more popping on here. So thank you so much for joining us. And then if by chance you've got any family and friends that after listening to us, you want to share this with, um, you can always message Lauren's page or uh, Renew Physical Therapy too, and we can get you a link. So feel free to do that as well. Um, I can, or we can just do that down there. All right, well, it's 12 o'clock noon. And again, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Mindy Beerline with Renew Physical Therapy. And I'm so excited to be joined here by Lauren Sarek. Thank you so much. And we're just really excited to um, talk weight loss for health. We'll discuss both the nutrition as well as the exercise portion. So thank you very much for joining us. Just a little bit about ourselves here. Um, again, I'm Mindy and I'm the managing partner here at Renew Physical Therapy for both the Frankmuth and Bridgeport clinics. I graduated from the University of Michigan Flint with my doctorate back in 2010. And I currently live in Vassar with my husband, Matthew, and our three awesome kids, Matthew, Madison, and Maddox. So oh, like this, all the M's. yes, all the M's. Um, my name is Lauren. I am a board certified physician assistant. Um, I graduated in 2011 from Chatham University um, with my master's degree. I specialize in family medicine and I own Frankenmuth Medical Associates and um, I have advanced certificates in obesity management and um, cosmetic injections. Awesome. Um, we are also planning on opening an office in Saginaw soon. So hopefully you'll see that coming. Yeah, very good. All right, so to get started, um, I'm going to talk about nutrition. Um, so why is nutrition important for fitness? Well, eating a well-balanced diet helps you fuel your body to do all of your exercises and, and your just daily activities. So um, it's really important to eat the right types of foods at the right times of day um, and kind of gear your meals towards what kind of activities you are doing. Mm -hmm. um, the most important thing is to get off to a good start. Your first meal of the day is the most important. Um, eating breakfast uh, has been linked to lower, lowering the risk of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Um, there's a lot of sugary, crazy breakfast options out there, but those are all simple car carbs. And um, it's better to eat something with a little bit more protein. Um, that way you'll feel full longer and um, you know, keep you energized throughout the day. 
the most important thing is counting on the right carbohydrates. Um, the, according to the Mayo Clinic, about 45 to 65% of your total daily calories should come from carbs. Um, again, people really rely on refined carbs, like sweets, processed foods, cereals, you know, like pop tarts, you know, pre-made muffins, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Um, so instead you should focus on eating complex carbohydrates, um, which are like whole grains, nuts, fruits, vegetables, and beans. Um, more of those complex carbs take longer for your body to break down and, um, helps you digest more slowly and basically just give you a better, fuller feeling longer. Um, you don't have that sugar crash from eating all those sugary things. Mm -hmm. um, so just some simple tips on choosing healthier carbs. You know, if you're gonna eat white rice, try brown rice. Um, if you like pasta, try getting whole grain pastas or veggie pastas out there mm -hmm. or um, there's a lot of different options for bringing whole grains and fiber into your diet. Um, instant oatmeal is something I'm sure a lot of people eat. It's, oatmeal is great for you. It absorbs some cholesterol. Um, but try rolled oats or steel cut oats. The instant oatmeals often have a lot of, um, you know, extra things that you don't need in your diet. Um, a lot of people have questions about measuring carbs. Um, on packaged foods, you can see the food labels and um, kind of figure out how many carbs you're eating that way. But you can also use carb counting apps like MyFitnessPal. Um, mm, I really enjoy that one. I, yeah, and um, Lose It. I really love the app Lose It. Um, you can scan your labels and kind of get a good idea of what you're eating in the day. Um, Diabetes patients, diabetic patients, um, carbs are super important for you guys. Um, one carb serving is about 15 grams of carbs. So when you meet with your nutritionist or your you know, physician, they'll talk to you about how many carbs you should be eating. And you can count, you know, one carb serving um, is about 15 grams of carbs. Um, a lot of people ask me, well, how many carbs should I be eating? Um, you know, that ranges depending on what's going on, what kind of lifestyle or fitness activities, you know, if you're a bodybuilder mm -hmm. or if you're just trying to stay healthy or tone up. But in general, you should not eat more than 100 net carbs in a day. Um, and then for those with diabetes or insulin resistance, like PCOS patients, and for weight loss, you should reduce your carbs. Um, so in counting carbs between 40 and 75 net carbs a day mm -hmm. will help you um, lose weight and help your body kind of work on that insulin resistance. Um, I, many of you probably don't even know how to count carbs or read a nutrition label. Um, and that's one of the most important things. Um, so the first thing you wanna look at on a nutrition label is the serving size. People eat way more than they should um, because stuff is coming in bigger and bigger and bigger packages mm -hmm. over the years. So for example, on this nutrition label that we have, their serving size is two thirds of a cup. So say this is like cereal, yeah. pretty common. Um, this package or box has eight two third cup servings. So if you eat the whole box or the whole thing, um, you're going to be eating almost 2000 calories and almost 300 carbs in one sitting. Wow. And that's super easy to do because mm -hmm. if you know you open up a package and you start eating it, right. like, it's really easy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's- Because you just want to fill the bowl. Right, you just want to fill your bowl, but mm -hmm. really you should measure right. the serving size so that you can actually get a good idea of the nutrition that you're doing. And I find that that's most of the problem is people mm -hmm. just aren't paying attention to serving sizes. Um, then, to, to see your total carbs, um, number three tells you the total carbs in just that one serving and not the whole package. Um, so in order to get net carbs, which is what we want you to count when you're counting carbs or doing a low carb diet or Weight Watchers, I think sometimes works on carbs and mm -hmm. um, you want to subtract dietary fiber because dietary fiber is actually very good for you. Um, dietary fiber 
helps absorb cholesterol, helps your digestion, um, and makes you feel fuller longer. So those are good. So we, we subtract that out of the total carbs. So for example, on this package, we have 37 grams of total carbs and four grams of dietary fiber. So you would just subtract that to get your net carbs. But the other thing that you should look at is the added sugars. Um, so there's a lot of added sugars hiding in our food. Um, so when you're looking at a nutrition label and it says total sugars or added sugars, that might be something that you don't want to get because mm -hmm. it's almost wasted, yeah. wasted, nutrition. wasted nutrition, empty calories, completely empty calories. Um, so yeah, beware. There is sugar hiding everywhere. Um, really, uh, you know, our body doesn't need those sugars, those added sugars, because we're getting them from the complex mm -hmm. carbohydrates. Um, the American Heart Association recommends that you limit your amount of added sugar to about six teaspoons or 24 grams of sugar for women and nine teaspoons or 36 grams of sugar for men. Um, so just keep in mind, like a 12 ounce can of soda has 10 teaspoons of added sugar. And some of those like mm -hmm. Starbucks drinks or, you know, creamy, oh, absolutely. they have more. So be very aware of what you're actually doing. A lot of that extra calories and extra sugar that you're getting is actually from what you're drinking. Um, so just check. And if you're looking to find hidden sugars, look for words like ending in O's or syrup or juice, because those are all sugars. Um, really important to fuel up before exercise. Um, again, carbs is what basically we get our energy from, but protein as well. And when you combine carbs and protein together, they work together to help you feel more energized and, you know, give you the amino acids that you need to build muscle. Um, so protein is very, very important. Um, when people increase their protein intake, you just automatically eat fewer calories because you're feeling fuller. It also boosts hunger hormones and appetite reducing hormones, leaving you feeling fuller. That's, so that's how that works. Um, an increased protein intake um, helps boost your metabolism because it's harder to burn off protein. So um, your body works a little harder and, you know, with thermogenesis, it basically helps you burn more calories. Um, so you're burning 80 to 100 extra calories a day just by eating more protein. Um, and if you're you know, working out, um, trying to tone up, protein will help you build weight. Um, foods that contain protein are you know, your meats, obviously chicken, red meat, beef, fish, um, tuna, and um, so those are some good options to choose mm -hmm. when you're trying to add protein. Um, other things you can add are like nuts, um, nut butters. Those have a lot of protein in them as well. How much protein should you eat? Well, um, the dietary reference intake uh, is 46 to 56 grams for the average man and woman. Um, however, that's not a lot. Mm -hmm. You should be eating more than that. Um, so about 30% of your calories should become coming from protein. Um, and you can kind of find out how much protein you should be eating for your body. Um, if you're eating like a 2000 calorie diet, for example, most people eat about that much. Um, you can multiply that by 0 0.075, which is 150 grams of protein. So that's way more than the recommended dietary intake. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but that's you should be getting about 150 grams of protein in your diet. Um, another way you can kind of calculate how much protein you're, you're sh you should be having is one gram of protein per pound um, of lean mass and so muscle mass. Um, I don't know. If, do you guys have um, like a body comp analysis or anything like that? We do sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So we do at our office, too. Um, so we can kind of find out how much lean mass versus like fat mass that you have. Um, you know, but someone like me, who's fairly fit, I would, you know, be around the 150 grams of protein. Okay. So, um, some other nutrition tips, boost your fruits and vegetable intake. They're great source of vitamins, fiber, again, super important for fiber. Um, you should really aim to fill 
your plate with fruits and veggies more than anything else. Get rid of the starches, you know, red meat is good, but watch your portion sizes. Um, you know, a beet portion is about the size of your fist. Um, condiments are about the size like of your thumbnail, like salad dressing. Um, you know, that's a, well, that's a good way to yeah, judge it like, for sure. Judge it, you know, you don't want like more than a, you know, because mm -hmm. you have your measurements right here in your wrist. Um, so that will help you boost your vitamin and mineral intake. Um, fat is something that a lot of people ask about too, like how much fat should I be eating? Um, it's a nutrient too. Uh, you shouldn't have a no fat diet, um, but you shouldn't have a really high fat diet either. Um, right now, like that keto is mm -hmm. super common, but it really, it, it increases your fat intake. So you really have to be careful when you're doing a keto diet that you're actually eating the right types of fats. Um, and there's good fats and bad fats. Um, so monounsaturated fats or polyunsaturated fats are good fats because they help protect your heart, um, reduce your cholesterol and just, oh, you know, are good for your overall health. Mm -hmm. Um, they lower your LDL, which is good and increasing your HDL. Um, it can, the good fats can also help lower your blood pressure. And these are the types of fats that don't clog your arteries. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. Um, sorry. So some good sources of the good fats are olive oils, sesame oils, avocados. Avocados are great, um, source of good fat nutrients, but you have to be careful with avocados and their serving sizes. Um, you know, a serving size of an avocado is like a slice, not the whole thing. Mm -hmm. so, good to remember. Very important. Peanut butter is a good source as well. Um, um, fatty fishes are another really great source of good healthy fat. So salmon, tuna, um, trout, grouper, all of those are really good fishes. You kind of want to stay away from the mahi-mahis and, you know, the, wow, so I'm trying to think of, but they, you know, those other fishes that aren't as fatty are just not really that great for you. Um, let's see, how do we get to the next one? Sorry, no, that's up. That's okay. There we go. There we go. So bad fats, trans fats. Um, there are naturally occurring trans fats in like meat and dairy products, but it's the artificial trans fats that we kind of want to avoid. Mm -hmm. um, they've done a really good job of regulating trans fats in the last 10 years, um, you know, before trans fats were everywhere, um, but the FDA has really um, cut back on that um, allowing that in prepared foods. Um, but you'll still find trans fats in like commercially baked pastries, like those prepackaged pastries, mm -hmm. donuts, muffins, pizza dough. Um, you maybe some like prepackaged crackers, microwave popcorn, chips, all still have trans fats. The problem with trans fats is that it raises the bad cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol, and lowers the good cholesterol, the HDL. Um, artificial trans fats um, can also cause inflammation okay. in your body, in your joints, in, in your blood vessels, which contributes to atherosclerosis or clogging of the arteries and um, can lead to heart disease, stroke, and other chronic conditions. Um, I think those are really easy to um, just grab though, because they oh, can yeah. be super fast. Yeah. You know, I've got three kids. And yeah, grabbing the like prepackaged snacks right. and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, um, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just being aware of what you're buying, what your nutrition label says is super, super important. Um, saturated fat is something that I'm sure everyone knows about. It's not as harmful as trans fats, um, but it's out there. Um, some saturated fat sources include red meat, chicken, skins, butter, ice cream, lard, and dairy products. Um, 
And a lot of times we like all of those things. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. It's summertime. Yeah. I want my ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yesterday was $2 Tuesday. Yep. So um, Jamie's was line out the door. Yep. Um, but you don't want to go no fat. Just try to go good fat. So being aware of what kind of fats you're eating. Um, these are just some tips for adding healthy fats into your diet. Um, you know, we talked about avocados, trying, you know, to add nuts as a snack, using olive oil to cook um, rather than like butter. Mm -hmm. um, so those are just some ideas. Weight loss is something everyone asks about. Um, we have a really big problem in America with obesity. Um, so weight loss is something that pretty much everyone mm -hmm. can um, learn about. Maintaining a healthy weight is not easy, um, it had, but it has a major impact on your health if you are fit. Um, if you're overweight, even a modest weight loss of five to 10% of your total body weight um, can really cause major improvements in your blood pressure, cholesterol, blood sugars. Um, so for example, if you weigh 200 pounds, um, a 5% weight loss is 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's not hard to achieve. No. So that, and it will make major changes in your health. Um, in simplest terms, weight loss happens when you burn more calories than you consume. Um, it's, that's the simplest idea. But there are tons of diet plans out there. You can count calories or points or carbs or macros. Some diets work, some diets don't, but it's because everybody is different. So there's no one size fits all solution for your diet. <clears throat> excuse me the best diet for you is one that you can stick to in the long run um the fad diets you know are mm -hmm. just hard to maintain um keto you can't do it forever right. i mean it's bad for your liver and your kidneys and um you know most people revert back to their old habits when they get tired of whatever mm -hmm. fad diet they're on so just sticking to a healthy lifestyle and you know watching what kind of nutrition you're putting into your body is the most effective. The other problem is a lot of people try to cut calories and they cut too many calories. Um, it, yeah, you need to burn more calories than you consume, but if you restrict calories to a point, then your body starts kind of wondering when it's gonna get its next meal or when, when the nutrition is actually gonna be there. So then it starts holding on to everything mm -hmm. that you put into your body. So it holds on to the sugar for later use, um, stores all your fat and calories, you know, and that can actually stall weight loss and even cause weight gain. Mm -hmm. So don't go to like a 300 calorie diet because that's not that's gonna help you. Um, intermittent fasting is, um, another fad diet. I'm glad you're covering this though, <laughs> because I feel like everybody's talking about yeah, intermittent so it's fasting. Yeah, so really, um, becoming very popular, but it also is very effective. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's something that is easy to keep up with. Like if you make it a part of your lifestyle, then, you know, it, it's something that you can do for the rest of your life. Um, it's something that I do, um, so I can talk about it and if you have any questions afterwards you can always you know call us or email me mm -hmm. or whatever if you have more questions but um basically intermittent fasting is a pat an eating pattern of fasting and eating um the most common fasting methods are 16 to 18 hour fast and then you eat in the window the six to eight hour window um that you have um Fasting is actually a normal human evolutionary function. Um, you know, our bodies are used to fasting back in the day when mm -hmm. we didn't know when we were going to get our next deer or when we would find berries or, you know, the hunter and gatherer in our primal being. Um, our bodies are actually meant for fasting. Um, they actually call breakfast break fast mm. because you should be fasting and that's the meal that's going to break your fast. Oh, um, so breakfast doesn't necessarily have to be eaten at seven or eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's just the meal that's breaking your fast. So um, for example, <clears throat> I do the 16-8 or um, the 18-6 method. So 
you restrict your daily eating period to about eight hours. So like 11 o'clock to seven o'clock in the daytime. And then the rest of the time you're fasting. So from like six or seven o'clock at night until 11 or 12 o'clock in the day. Um, and then my breakfast is at noon. Um, mm-hmm. and, but that going back to what we said earlier, that first meal is very important. Yeah. So it's not just breakfast food, cereal, or, you know, mm-hmm. pop tarts. It's you're breaking your fast. So your body's like, you're giving your body the nutrition that it needs. Mm-hmm. So now working full time, do you find that rather challenging? No, actually it's a whole lot easier. For oh, good. Um, good. you know, I mean, my, my eating is mostly at work, mm-hmm. obviously, but, um, you know, just making healthy choices and, you know, mm-hmm. so it, it's really, it works out for me as a working professional. Um, so yeah, that is something that our bodies really need. Um, there are apps that can help you work up to intermittent fasting. I mean, 18 hours sounds like a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I like my food. So I know, right? right? Me too. Food. I love that. Food. But you know, you can eat all of the wonderful things that you like to eat, mm-hmm. but just in a shorter period of time. Right. That's right. You don't need to eat for the entire 24 hours in a day. Mm-hmm. Um, so intermittent fasting is a very powerful weight loss tool. I mean, you basically automatically reduce your calorie intake because you're not eating a late night snack and you're not having, you know, that quick breakfast and you're focusing on the meals that you're actually eating. Mm -hmm. Um, A study found that this intermittent eating fasting can cause as much as an eight, even more than that weight loss over, you know, three to 24 week period. Wow. That's huge. I mean, we just talked about losing five to 10% higher um, your health. So this is one really easy way to do it. Absolutely. And I think it, us as humans, when we step on that scale and you don't see the number move, that is the most frustrating thing to ever. It's very frustrating. So, but the other thing too, is you want to learn to kind of not work on the number, mm-hmm. learn, right. look, you know, care about the number, but care about how your clothes are fitting, how you feel. Do you have Mm -hmm. energy? Are you sluggish? Are you, um, you know, eating all of these crazy things and getting, you know, acne or, um, you know, there's a lot of things that go into nutrition. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you are working on weight loss, you lose muscle too. So really important to eat more protein when you're fasting, or if you're trying to lose weight, and doing exercise, toning, Mm -hmm. lifting weights, that kind of thing to keep your muscles um, up. And actually muscles burn more calories than having fat mass. So the more muscle you have, Mm -hmm. the easier it is because it's automatically burning calories. Um, Some more benefits of intermittent fasting, obviously weight loss, um, but for those who have insulin resistance or PCOS, um, intermittent fasting can reduce insulin resistance and lower, lower your blood sugar by like three to 6%. Um, and it can increase your insulin levels by 20 to 30%, which is huge. Um, and it really helps protect, um, from developing diabetes. Um, intermittent fasting can also reduce inflammation. Um, so those are driving so many of the chronic diseases that we have, you know, arthritis, um, obviously being heavy, um, puts a lot of pressure on your joints and those kinds of things. Um, but inflammation in your arteries, you know, causing Mm -hmm. strokes, heart attacks, um, you know, chronic ulcers on your feet. So that's super important too. Um, some studies suggest that intermittent fasting can also prevent cancer because it lowers the um, tumor neogenesis. So that's kind of an interesting um, side piece that you could look into. Um, other weight loss tips. So drink more water. Everybody could drink Makes more sense. water. Um, drink water, drink a full glass of water before you eat. Mm-hmm. Water can make you feel full. It helps reduce your appetite. Therefore, you're not eating as much in your meal. Um, eat slowly. Um, a lot of people, you know, especially those of us who are between patients right. or between meetings are like, oh, I got to eat so mm-hmm. fast. Um, try to slow down, slow down your eating. Um, if you <clears throat> if you slow down your eating, it takes about 15 minutes for a body to realize that you're full. 
So the slower you eat, the more time it gives your body to go, oh, I shouldn't eat any more of that. You know, that over full Thanksgiving feeling. Yes. Yeah, you don't want that. And sleep is so, so, so important. Poor sleep um, is one of the biggest risk factors for weight gain um, because it affects the hormones that regulate hunger. So, um, you know, sleep apnea, you know, restless legs, all those things, even just joint pain or back pain. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people talk from that and toss and turn all night long. You know, that is not good for your health. Um, and one thing I didn't add on here was shift work. Oh, absolutely. So the shift work can really screw up your hunger, your, you know, hunger hormones and your appetite hormones. And that's a big struggle for, um, people who work shift work. So, um, intermittent fasting is something that can definitely help with that. Um, if you're ready to get started, see your doctor, make sure it's safe and something healthy. Um, nutrition is the key to weight loss, healthy living, but exercise is also super important. So you got to be sure that you're physically capable and safe to start exercising. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, when setting a weight loss goal, don't set it too high. Start with small numbers. I want to lose five pounds in the next couple of weeks. You know, don't go, oh, I want to be 125 pounds. Mm -hmm. like, that's a really big goal. And attaining a goal that big is really difficult. Right. So start with small goals um, and meet those goals along the way. Um, a one to two pound a week weight loss is healthy. And if you are consistently doing that in a year or two, you'll hit your goal and it's not that difficult. Um, some resources for nutrition, um, Cornerstones for Care is amazing. They have so many card county nutrition labels, meal planning guides. That's the best website. I can't say enough good things about it. And then nutrition.gov is another really great source of information. So Very I good. highly recommend that you check those out. Yeah. Thank you. So Mindy, I'm going to pass it off to you to talk about exercise. Very good. That's the next, very the next most important step. step. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Lauren. So with exercise, um, it's really important to just start simple, start where you are, use what you have and do what you can. Um, find more opportunities to just sit less and move more. It's simply um, like your activity snacking. If you want to tie it back <laughs> to the nutrition aspect, yep. we've just got a snack every so often, but with our activities more than the food. So some great ways to increase your non-activity levels um, wherever you are is during your cleaning. Maybe you pick up the pace a little bit and get that heart rate going yeah. more or go for a walk in the park with your dog. Um, everything can be fun. You can dance in the kitchen with your kids. That's always one of our favorites. And then of course, taking the stairs more than the elevator and performing the yard work. Yep. Just those little tips along the way burn more calories too. It's recommended though, um, even a five minute walk after meals to get that heart rate and digestion going a little bit more, but also never sit more than two hours. And all of you working from at home, that can be quite a challenge right now. Yeah, so, especially with the pandemic and yes. the Zooms and the Zoom meetings and exactly for sure. Get up, walk around, mm -hmm. you know, stand while you're doing your meeting. Right, exactly. So the first thing is to just build a plan. Would you prefer being more active in your home? Or do you need something a bit more organized and actually go to a fitness facility? You know, you really need to tailor it to what you enjoy and what right. you will actually accomplish. Also, what time of day works out best for you? I know my day started this morning at 6.30 a.m. That was my first patient. And so for me to tell myself, okay, I'm going to wake up an hour earlier at 4.30 a.m., you've got to be kidding me. I, I know in my heart that I'm not going to do it. Yeah. It's not feasible. And so hopefully I can get something in this afternoon rather. But then also what's fun for you to do. If it's not fun, if it's tedious and you dread doing it, chances are you're going to drop that habit um, before the habit even starts. So really important though, even as um, busy people are, we really need to schedule this activity into our calendars to make it an important part <laughs> of the day. 
So um, like Lauren had said, though, if you have any questions about your nutrition, your exercise status, that ache or joint pain that you've been having for a really long time, it's always important to discuss this with your health provider first. Um, and then maybe discuss too, would physical therapy help? We can oftentimes um, help with these things prior to um, getting that exercise routine started and going. And so best to beat the pain before it even begins. Absolutely. The other um, exercise tip is to find an activity partner. Um, having that accountability partner can really help you stick with it. So this might be meeting a friend for a walk on the new rail trail or joining a fitness group, but even just checking in with each other. I know there are some great online groups, um, even on Facebook and sure. just checking in real quick. Hey, did you get yours done? No, nope, I've got to do it. And just having that push like, yes, please go do that. So with exercise and weight loss, it's really important as um, Lauren had kind of mentioned to do both aerobic activity, but also, also strength training to keep those muscles nice and strong because you can lose muscle mass and Absolutely. we want those muscles to burn those calories. So first aerobic activity, this is what everybody thinks of. It's where you increase your heart rate and your breathing to burn those calories. And so a first goal should be to build up to 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity. So whether you're walking briskly, getting that heart rate up, um, to bike riding or being in the pool, you know, any little thing helps. But then as you get that habit going, it's really important to then increase it just a little bit more. So even up to at least 250 active minutes per week. And as you get stronger too, you'll notice, okay, so maybe I'm going to now do laps in the pool, or I'm going to go to Hocking Hills and hike hills, you know, those different things are amazing. And that growth will really push you and keep you going too. But always listen to your body, start low and go slow and just do a little bit more each time. Also make sure you're staying hydrated. And as Lauren had said, water is the key. So don't pick up those sodas or you've got to even watch like your Gatorades, how much sugar is in some of those. Oh, lot. So really important to don't drink those calories. And then always remember to exercise in the water takes stress off of your joints. And so we'll get more into that. Also, strength training, though, is really important. So using resistance improves our strength as well as our overall health. So what is it? Yes, people think of hand weights and resistance bands, and you can find anything under the sun on Amazon, and it can be at your door tomorrow. But also just even using the weight of your own body, doing some wall push-ups or some squats at the kitchen counter, those also go a long way. So strength training, though, should be performed two to three days per week with rest days in between because our muscles really need that rest time to rebuild and feel good. If you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, chances are you're not going to want to do a leg day tomorrow. Or so, get injured. Right, exactly. And so, of course, how hard? You want to make sure that you're working against something, but yet you can do it appropriately and with good posture. So really start light to medium and work your way up, trying about eight to 12 reps. And to get the strength going, you'll want to repeat those repetitions two to four times. Of course, breathing is really important as you're doing any strength training so that you don't strain your muscles or that creating that abdominal pressure for any hernias and so forth. And circuit training has been shown to really help with weight loss, providing both that strength and aerobic training. So some exercise tips, just like the nutrition side of things, the best workout routine for weight loss are the ones that you can do consistently. All in all, though, if you want to feel better, move better, sleep better, active people get the biggest bang for their buck. 
Experts now say that any physical activity counts towards better health, even if it's just a few minutes. So something is better than nothing. So again, just like the nutrition side of things, maybe don't focus on those trendy workouts, but again, really, I guess, you know, focus on your lifestyle, which you enjoy doing. And again, something is better than nothing. If your gym is 45 minutes away, are you really going to go? Yeah. I mean, that's time consuming. Something else too, you can break up your exercise. You don't have to do 150 minutes all at one time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, and you've got in a half an hour in a day. Yep. So Absolutely. Break it up. Mm -hmm. Make it easier on yourself. Great point. So some more exercise tips for getting started. Um, truly though, getting started is the hardest part. And if you're overweight, you might find certain things just hard to do and you might get out of breath easily, but the more you move, I promise the better it gets over time. So just remember when we're overweight, again, we're higher risk for health problems like Warren had said with diabetes, heart disease, knee arthritis, and some types of cancer. But then again, this is the start to the better you, a better you playing with grandkids, traveling with your spouse, um, going for walks with friends, and those benefits are really endless. So the CDC now recommends, again, that 150 minute of physical activity per week. But like Lauren had just said, break it up. Make sure um, even just 20 minutes, three times a week, and then expand it from there. So next, we're just going to go through a few different types of activities to get your body moving. Um, start with a really feasible one and one that's comfortable for you. And the first one I think of is going for a walk. So after a lengthy surgery or hospitalization, I often have to remind my patients that even walking the length of their home is a place to start. And something is better than nothing. And from there, they can see those little gains along the way. But we need to remember that this is for weight loss as well. So maybe you start with a short walk, one that gives you a lot to look at. It kind of passes the time away so that you're not just looking at your clock and saying, oh, okay, five, five more minutes. minutes. Yep, everybody thinks five more minutes. You know, just tuck it away, taking the beautiful nature outside and just keep going. Also remember flat surfaces are easier and you can always build up your strength and endurance to maybe include a hill or two later on. Every little bit helps. But we also need to remember to really watch our injury prevention. And so even in walking, um, you can hurt yourself. So wearing proper footwear is key. Arch support is key so that your foot is properly supported. If you're experiencing any foot or ankle pain, make sure that you're stretching before as well as after, and then giving that foot the proper support. So just like the kids saw in the foot bones connected to the ankle bone, the forces <laughs> just work their way up. So an ankle injury can lead to low back issues or knee or hip. I mean, it just starts everywhere. So again, posture, looking at the way that you're performing that walking routine, and then of course, rest to give ourselves a break. So the next great exercise is cycling. It's a great way to get moving both indoors and outdoors. You can use a stationary bike or ride outdoors. Um, moderate cycling can actually burn about 300 calories in just an hour. What? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's getting so popular. Exactly. <laughs> Huge right now. And so to be honest, though, cycling is recommended for those who have any hip or knee joint issues as it unweights the area and allows you to move better. But of course, cycling can provide um, be prone to injury and so forth. So of course you wanna wear a helmet, no matter what speed, no matter what location, always recommended to um, protect those noggins and so forth. But the biking size and ergonomics um, is especially important. 
and you might need these to be addressed, especially if you have any low back issues or shoulder issues. There are um, many adjustments that can be made to even just keep yourself more upright versus leaning forward and putting more pressure through those joints. And so there are a lot of key places that you can go to get that figured out. Or of course, you know, speaking with a physical therapist or your healthcare provider might also have some great um, ideas for that. Swimming in particular can be nice for those um, who are overweight or maybe you've just gone through a bariatric surgery too. Um, the water unweights our joints with the buoyancy factor. And just remember though, the deeper you go into the water, the more resistance you'll have. So different water activities that um, can be used or performed are even just walking in the water forward, backward, side to side to really work on your hip motion or your balance training. There's some really fun water aerobics classes, but then also you can do a lot of strengthening in the water too. Um, maybe some push pulls with some foam weights, as well as kicking with your legs forward, side, back, bicycles. I mean, it truly is endless. But the other factor that swimming gives us are even some balance movements. Maybe you're standing with your feet together, or standing on one leg. And it's amazing what even the gentle waves, your accountability partner next door is creating that you have to hold yourself up against. Sure. That makes total sense. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, swimming can lead to injury as well. So really as you're doing those activities, watch your posture, change up your stroke style if you're doing laps to prevent overuse, and then really watch the position of your neck and shoulders as you're doing those breathing techniques. Of course, too, um, very important to stay hydrated in the water. The water can really drain us and again, something to look towards. So another fun idea are all of these exercise classes popping up. Um, spinning is really yeah. an in thing here in Frankenmuth, but there are some Zumba classes and mm -hmm. um, cardio drumming. And so really find something that you enjoy and this will increase your chances of sticking with it. Take a friend, or to be honest, with all of us kind of working from home, maybe you just need to YouTube a couple of fun videos in your spare time. Yeah, that's like, there's so many videos on YouTube that mm -hmm. you can just choose from and- Yeah, pick one with good music. Yeah, do Zumba at home or yoga at home. Right. You don't even have to go to the gym. No, not at all. To, nobody has to see you doing it. Yep, exactly. So, all right. Um, if anything, though, just mix it up. Find one that works for you. Get that accountability partner. As we said countless times, stick with it. Something's always better than nothing. And habits truly take time to build. Don't be discouraged if you don't meet that big goal. Like Lauren had said, make those small goals and meet those along the way. Um, but movement, movement is key. But no matter what the exercise, stop if you feel pain. And sharp pain is what we're talking about. Chances are when you mm -hmm. exercise, you're going to feel that muscle soreness. And that is very normal. Muscle soreness, though, that lasts more than 24 hours means that you did too much. If you can't walk the next day, then we've got a problem. <laughs> you just need to tone it back down. But again, those sharp pains right in the joint line and so forth, you wanna make sure that you stop and truly get evaluated by your healthcare provider or a physical therapist. This might be a sign that you simply just need more stretching, but something more serious could be going on too. So here at physical, at Renew Physical Therapy, um, we offer free 15-minute screenings that can help assess any of these issues, whether it's the pain that you're having, but also the balance and walking issues, core strength and range of motion to really allow you to do what you want to do. Do you need an appointment for that? 
Um, yes. So what I would recommend is to call the facility and they'll set you right up. Oh, yeah. Good One thing that's really nice, though, with those screenings is if somebody comes in and, yep, they've got a low back issue that we can help with, what I usually do is I will write up a whole report and then I'll fax it right over to Lauren. And so then that way your healthcare provider is in the know. And then as she looks at your whole case, then she can also decide, hey, is this something that we should pursue? Or do we need to do further testing and so forth? So yeah, okay. it's always good working with you guys. So again, uh, Renew offers 16 great locations. Crazy. Yeah. Those are blown up. Yep. We hit our 10 year anniversary coming up this October. So we're really excited about that. But you can check us out in the Great Lakes Bay. And of course, Lauren is here in Frankenmuth, but look for her out in the Shields area coming soon. Crossing our fingers. Yeah. But now we're to our question and answer section. So um, Kate, our marketer, if you don't mind, have there been any questions that we can address here? Thanks so much, ladies. That was wonderful. We do have a couple of questions. Um, and if anybody has any last minute questions, go ahead and click that Q&A button to submit those. Um, but one person said that they recently had weight loss surgery and they were wondering if you had any recommendations for exercise besides walking that they could try. Oh, absolutely. So another great one is also the swimming. Um, it unweights your joints and it's amazing what you can do in the water. And of course, the deeper you go, the more resistance you'll have. But even lunges, lunges might be really painful at first out um, no, no. on the land. So lunges and squats, it's amazing what people can do in the water. So I would highly recommend that too. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is there a pool anywhere around here in the area? I didn't grow up in oh. Franklin, So like, is there somewhere that people can go to do water exercises? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So actually some of our local hotels will oh, okay. offer like a drop-in rate. And then during the winter time, also Yogi Bear Park offers oh. a drop-in rate for their pool too. Cool. Good to so know. Yeah. yeah, you can even reach out to them. That's Thank awesome. you. I never Great even question. thought about hotels. That is yeah, a yeah. really good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I'm making some phone calls to find out so I can right. refer patients. Exactly. For sure. That's awesome. Um, somebody else asked if there are any specific weight gain considerations for people who are postmenopausal. Um, I'll answer this question. Sure. So, you know, obviously you want to talk to your healthcare provider. Maybe you're having a hormonal imbalance. Um, you know, insulin resistance can increase as our, you know, estrogen and testosterone hormones change. So you might just want to look into, um, have your healthcare provider look into some of those problems and also thyroid um, issues are really, you know, really common and that can contribute to weight gain and just inability to lose weight. So I would say speak with your healthcare provider um, about your concerns and you know, hopefully they can guide you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, this is kind of a fun question. Somebody asked if you have any suggestions for married couples when one person doesn't like vegetables. <laughs> Did my husband write that, Kate? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's anonymous, I won't say. Oh man, okay. That is kind of funny, but um, it almost reminds me of my kids. I guess for right. kids, you just have to make it fun. And for adults, you probably have to be a little sneakier. I would say, yeah. I mean, you can buy, like I said, you can buy pastas that are made from vegetables. Um, you can puree some vegetables into some of your sauces that you're making for your foods. Um, you know, you can dress them up with other, you know, with nuts or, um, you know, cheese and those kinds of things to help add protein while you're eating your vegetables. So Mm -hmm. um, make them taste a little bit better um, or just hide them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> those are great tips. Um, we've got just a couple more questions still coming in. Um, one, somebody asked if you could discuss added sugar in beer and wine and how that might play into weight loss. Okay, well, um, yes, there, I mean, alcohol is a carbohydrate. Um, it's a simple carbohydrate. So it's not something that's super great for us. 
Um, however, in wine, the especially red wine, the antioxidants are good. So they do recommend if you're drinking alcohol that like uh, a red wine with dinner, like one one or two glasses, not the entire bottle, mm-hmm. um, is you know can be safe and healthy. Um, but you know, I definitely don't recommend drinking a ton of beer. Um, if you're, if you, you know, if you like to drink or go out or socialize, it's summer, you know, 4th of July is coming up, try something that is a little less carbohydrate heavy, like maybe um, you could do vodka and soda mm-hmm. with a lime or a lemon or something that has a lot less carbs, um, complex carbohydrates, or I mean, simple carbohydrates in, you know, because you're just drinking basically seltzer water and a little bit of mm-hmm. vodka. So that's yeah. something that you could try um, to reduce those you know, consumption of mm-hmm. stuff. That's not great. great point. Wonderful. Um, somebody asked if Renew offers a diet and nutrition class, which we don't. Um, yep. We don't right now, but I would say too, um, that can totally be discussed also with your healthcare Absolutely. provider. Yeah. But then if you're looking more towards eventually that exercise portion that's where those 15 minute screenings can be great and address those get you on a nice program and then to be honest too once you're a patient of renews you have full access to the gym for two months for free cool Mm -hmm. so it's a great way to maybe um, a formal gym isn't the atmosphere that you're looking into but yet you can breeze in monday through friday use the equipment and so forth Right now, yeah. Right now with COVID, um, we just recommend that when using the Renew facilities, you call ahead just so we can maintain social distancing and so forth, just so things don't get too overcrowded. But really, it's something we can work with. Yep, it's amazing. Um, We do have a medical weight loss um, nutrition program at our office. Um, We would be happy to do a consultation with you. Um, if you do have questions, also Covenant has a um, diabetic nutrition class. I think it's like a six-week class. Oh, nice. um, so you could ask your healthcare provider for a referral um, to that program. Um, I don't know if it's limited to just diabetics, but it's a very good class. Um, and it's only about six weeks. It's like once a week for six weeks. Um, and then you can also just look up some nutritionists and dietitians in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you have questions, reach out to them. That's great advice. Um, this one is, I know it's a difficult diagnosis, but for people who have Crohn's and where they really can't eat a lot of fiber, if there is any recommendations you might have for them. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, usually I would say those patients would see the gastroenterologist and, you know, make a very personalized plan for them. I mean, maybe one person who has Crohn's is affected by X, Y, and Z foods, but maybe you who have Crohn's isn't, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's something that's very, very individualized, um, you know, that's a very difficult one. And that might just obviously take those one-on-one moments with your doctors. Yeah, that's good advice too. I think this is the last question, unless we have anybody who submits anything, Um, but they just kind of mentioned as you're starting to look at labels Um, what artificial sweeteners to be careful of, if you have any advice there. Yeah, um, stay away, stay away from artificial sweeteners. Um, It's just chemicals that really aren't necessary. Um, Try to stick to all natural, um, you know, juices and things um, that just don't have added sugars at all. Um, You know, if you're a diabetic, you know, those Coke Zeros and that kind of thing. I mean, they have the aspartame and, um, you know, so that's something that you just try to limit, right? Just Mm -hmm. limit that in your diet. Um, You can, Swenda is a good artificial sweetener um, to use, Stevia, um, and then drawing a blank on the other one, but um, those ones are, you know, pretty good. I would try to stay away from, from them if possible. Okay, great. We did just have another question come in. Um, with all the, I know there's a lot of promotion of like supplements and over the counter weight loss aids, if you have thoughts on those, or if there's any that you would recommend. Um, yeah, so a lot of them are gimmicky. I'm, you know, there's a ton out there. Um, you know, stackers, I just saw at the gas station the other day, 
you know, first and foremost, you want to talk to your healthcare provider because you may have drug interactions. Um, a lot of those supplements aren't regulated at all um, by the FDA. So you want to, you know, make sure you're buying from a reputable source, um, Healthy Habits, Healthway Pharmacy, and Saginaw has a bunch of supplements um, and can give you good recommendations. Um, we also have a line of um, vitamins and supplements, um, which is kind of geared towards the post-bariatric. We have a lot of chewable vitamins um, and things that we can recommend, um, but we also have just general like um, multivitamins and things like that um, that are pretty, uh, that, well, I made sure that they were, um, what's the word? Vetted. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, just make sure you're going to somewhere that's um, knows what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great idea. Right. That makes sense. Well, thank you, ladies. That's all we have for questions, but I want to thank you both for sharing all your time and knowledge with us. And thank everybody you. who joined us will get an email follow up that has a link to watch the recording. So if there's any sections you wanted to rewatch, you can certainly do that. But great. Otherwise, thank you. Thank so you. Much. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, have a great afternoon. You too.